and I was able to talk to a career counselor at a top 20 law school. Realistically, what do first year associates make on average? Does going to a top 14 or a T14 school make job opportunities much more easy to come by? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing part two of my Ask an Expert series. Last time I did a video all about law school admissions, talking to a law school admissions counselor from a top 10 law school. But today I'll be talking all about how to find a job after law school, how to have a career as a lawyer, and I was able to talk to a career counselor at a top 20 law school. So hopefully this will be informative for you guys to understand what the job market is like, how it is finding a job, and tips for finding a job when you're in law school. So similar to my other video, I'm going to do it where I basically ask questions and then I'll state the answer in a summarized form of what the career counselor talked to me about. So the first question that I asked was, is law school a good investment? I think a lot of people ask this question, a lot of people think about this question. Do I want to spend that much money to go to law school if it's not going to be a good return? And I thought the answer was interesting and you guys probably aren't going to like this, but it's really a bad question to be asking. And if you're asking this question, you might want to think about and you might want to consider why you're going to law school because the point of law school is not to make a lot of money it's not to get a return on your investments so to speak if you want if you're going to law school you should go to law school because you really want to go to law school because you want to be a lawyer because you love the law or you saw that becoming a lawyer is something that you want to do to get to where you want to be in your career if money is a motivating factor for you going to law school, then it might not be for you and I might even venture to say it's probably not for you because you're going to get disappointed and you're going to get burnt out in the end. Also, do you really want to go through the stress of trying so hard to get into law school, paying a lot and then realizing it's not for you, but you work so hard to get there? So I think you should really reevaluate yourself if this is a big question for you. The next question is, what does job market look like for lawyers? And it's actually looking pretty good. There's been an uptick in hiring in both the private and public sector, in big law jobs as well as smaller firms. But that all being said, the economy is not stable. It can be up one day, down the next. If you're thinking about going to law school and you haven't even gone yet, most likely when you graduate from law school, the economy will be different than it is today. So this isn't quite a good question to ask either because the economy is so volatile, it can change and it's hard to really base your decision on going to law school or how hard it's going to be for you to find a job if you're not even going to go for the next five years. Okay, so the next question is realistically, what do first year associates make on average? Again, I know a lot of you are interested in how much money am I going to make as a lawyer, but really that shouldn't be your focus. However, if that's really something that you want to know, I mentioned before in previous videos, I would check Robert Half because they talk a lot about salaries and they take surveys across the United States. And I would also look at NALP, N-A-L-P. They have a lot of good statistics on salaries. And one piece of advice that the career counselor told me was that it really depends on who you work for. There are two tips when evaluating this. One, look at the type of employer. Basically, big law versus everything else. If you don't know, big law are like the top law firms. They only hire a certain percentage of students from law school. They pay the most, but there's a very small percentage of that. So obviously, if you're not going into big law, you're not going to be making that much money. And two, which is related, you should look at salary averages or salary distribution charts rather than just plain statistics because big law, since they're such an outlier, they'll mess up the averages or they'll mess up the statistics. So you want to look at a salary distribution chart to see really where the averages are and how much the average lawyer makes. But just as an example, if you work for a big law in the LA area, as a first year associate, you're probably making close to 190k a year, which is pretty crazy. The next question is, how can you best position yourself while in law school to get a great job after law school? So there's basically two parts to this answer. The first one is practical experience. We can't emphasize this enough that you really want to get practical experience in the field that you want to work in. For example, you want to go into immigration law, you probably want to get an internship or work at an immigration law firm or some sort of experience dealing with immigration. The second thing is networking. Networking is really important. I know you probably hear this all the time, but it's true because the people that you meet today could become your future bosses or people that will lead you to your current job. I know I mentioned this in my video that the job I have now was because I had connections to the boss that hired me at this current job. So I would say network as much as possible. A follow-up question is how can you make a good impression on future lawyers? 
During your first year, grades are obviously the most important. You should really focus on getting good grades because that will determine and all that employers have to look at for your first job for the first summer after your 1L year. After that, practical experience is important. So because you studied well and you did well in your first semester, then you're able to get a good job your first summer and that experience might lay the foundation for other jobs that you get during the school year because that's the only real job experience that you have to speak of. And again, meet as many people as possible and network and that'll help you to make a good impression to find a first job. The next question is, what courses are best to take during law school? Again, it really depends on what kind of lawyer you want to be. If you want to be a litigator, they suggested that you take classes related to writing, pretrial advocacy, negotiating, and advanced legal writing because you're actually going to be writing a lot. Even though you're in court and you're arguing, you're also doing a lot of writing, you're also writing a lot of briefs and motions. So you want to make sure that you are a good writer. Even for corporate law, I would say practical classes about legal drafting, negotiations. I would also say, again, writing. Writing is a huge part of being a lawyer and you really need to be able to write well. All right, another good question is, does going to a top 14 or a T14 school make job opportunities much more easy to come by? Again, this depends on what your goal is, what your career goal is, what kind of firm do you want to work for? What kind of job do you want after law school? The career counselor told me that there's three main factors, geography, rank and finances. So we'll go over the first one, which is geography. You want to go to school where you want to eventually practice. This makes sense because you're going to be doing a lot of networking, you're going to be making a lot of connections in the city that your school is in. And I would say that a lot of alumni that probably go to that school live in that area and work in the jobs that you'll be applying to. So if you know you want to work in New York, I would say go to law school in New York City. If you want to work in California, Go to law school in California and it's specifically the region of California that you want to work in. The second is ranking. Obviously if you want to go into big law, geography is not as important but ranking is more important. I hate to say it but they care a lot about status and so if you don't go to a top 14 school but you want to go into big law, the chances are probably much slimmer than if you did go to a top 14 school. That being said, if you don't care about going to big law, then going to a top 14 school doesn't matter as much. But although they do hire from the top law schools, alumni are very key. And one thing the career counselor talked to me about, which I thought was interesting, is that if there's alumni at the law firm that you want to apply to, you might get a leg up than someone that didn't go to your school. Because the alumni care about the makeup of the incoming class of first year associates, they may favor those that went to their same school. So you might want to do some research into what law firms you might want to work at and maybe what alumni and what schools they went to. All that being said, finances is the last consideration. Obviously, don't take out a whole mortgage just to go to a top 14 school because, like I said at the beginning of this video, you don't want to hedge everything against going to top 14 school, going there and realizing you don't want to be a lawyer or maybe you don't even want to go to big law and so it was kind of a waste. So really take into consideration whether or not what your career goals are and whether or not it makes sense to spend so much money to go to this school or maybe to go to a school that gave you a scholarship. That being said, if you're debating between a top 14 school and a school that's much lower ranked, let's say in the bottom half, then you probably want to go to the top 14 school despite getting maybe some money or a scholarship from the lower school because in the end it still will give you a slight leg up. The next question is what's a good starting job for a newly graduated law student? It also depends on what kind of job you want, what kind of career you want. Obviously if you want to go in house like me I would probably suggest going to a law firm first and learning the most you can and then getting out and going in house. But if you can, go in-house right away and find a job at a company. Or one thing that the career counselor said is if you want to go into litigation, a thing that's, that's often overlooked are trial courts. They offer a good foundation and experience that can help you get into another court or clerkship if that's what you're looking for. The next question is, what are some alternative careers for law school grads? Sometimes you go to law school and you actually graduate, but you realize you don't want to be a lawyer. You don't want to take the bar exam. And a lot of people say that getting a law degree is very versatile, you can do whatever you want. And while I don't think that's that true, it, there are some alternative careers that you can go into and it's not too late for you. One thing that a career counselor mentioned was usually you find jobs in the industry or the sector that you were previously working in. 
Most people that come to law school have already been working and sometimes they were working in totally different fields like real estate or something. So maybe when they graduate, they'll just kind of go back into that field, but maybe in a different type of position. Another great field is human resources. You deal a lot with employment law and if you have a, a legal background, it might help you. Another one is compliance. So there are a lot of similarities to the law because you're looking to make sure that companies are in compliance with laws and other regulations. Recruiting is another big one. There are a lot of recruiters that work for big law firms or even companies who are trying to recruit other lawyers. And if you have a legal background and you understand what it means to go to law school and maybe even practice, then it would help to become a recruiter. Another one is obviously working at a law school, either in admissions, in career counseling, in financial aid, being a professor, being in the education of becoming a lawyer is important since you've already, you may have already been one, you may have practiced, and you went to law school, so you sort of understand what law students are going through. Lastly, there's obviously tax, financial, banking, a lot of these again have to do with regulations, rules. I would say that maybe people who are good at being lawyers would be good in these fields too because of the type of brain that they have. All that being said, one thing to keep in mind is that if you don't know whether or not you want to go to law school, you might want to consider not going to law school. I've mentioned this in previous videos and in my Should I Become a Lawyer video, but don't go to law school because you have nothing else that you want to do or that you know of that you want to do. The career counselor even mentioned maybe get your MBA instead because that at least has more, that could open more doors than going to law school which is very narrow. Next, we're going to ask two advice questions. The first question is, what is some advice for someone who knows exactly what kind of law they want to go into? You want to meet as many professionals as possible, and you want to develop a professional network. That way you can use these connections when you're looking for internships or for jobs. I would say conduct as many informational interviews as possible, reach out to lawyers in your area, even lawyers that you may have interviewed with and you didn't get the job, keep in touch with them and try to go out for coffee or talk to them. And one interesting tidbit was that you'll start to learn their language. You want to become a real estate lawyer? They probably have their own acronyms, their own sayings, their own things that they have that everyone knows about. And when you talk to these real estate lawyers, you're going to start picking up on that lingo. And then when you go into interviews, you're going to be able to speak back to them and you'll sound much more knowledgeable about the field that you want to go into. So I would say network and talk to as many lawyers as possible. The second question is what advice do you have for someone that doesn't know what kind of law they want to go into? If it's your first year, I wouldn't worry about it. Just try to do as best in your your first year grades, get a good internship for your first summer, and then really start thinking about what you like to do. During that time, of course, you should go on more informational interviews and network as much as possible. Talk to lawyers in different fields. Maybe think of three types of legal fields that you want to go into. Find three, find lawyers at each of the three areas, talk to them, figure out if you like what they do, and understand if it's something that you would like doing. So basically, talk to as many people as possible. The next question is, what advice should you give to someone if they're not sure whether or not they should go to law school? Again, talk to as many people as possible. I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you talk to people that are actually in the field or being a lawyer, then you understand what it means on a day-to-day. -day. What skills do I need? What does it look like? Do you enjoy being a lawyer? And hopefully that will give you some insight whether or not you want to be a lawyer yourself. And if not, I would say try to work at a law firm, do something, an internship before you invest in law school just to make sure it's really something that you want to do. This last question was sort of interesting. It was basically, do you think that some aspects of the legal field will be automated in the future? And the question is hard to really predict because the future is so uncertain, but I think the conclusion that we came to is that no, we don't think so because there's still a lot of gray area. The law is not black and white as you may think it is. There's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of human element to it and there's of course places like legal zoom but those but the law there's so many nuances, there's so many things that you may not understand and that a machine or a computer won't be able to understand. So I think it is helpful to have a lawyer, a human person, who's reviewing your case or understanding the, the facts and then trying to figure out a resolution. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video and that you found it helpful and useful. I think the takeaway point is to really do your research, talk to other lawyers, network and understand what kind of job you wanna get and how you can get to that career path because there's different ways there's different types of law there's different sectors 
So figuring out what you want to do is important, but if it's if you're not even in law school yet, I wouldn't worry about it. If you have any questions, of course, comment below. I'll try my best to answer, and I'm still in touch with this career counselor, so I'll try to ask them for advice as well. Let me know if you have any other video requests or ideas. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!